I'm in a fiery kind of a mood. What I, what I was thinking with this instrument was around the, around the inlaid top and the inlaid headstock, I go in and I do the same solder inlay technique as I did before. But the fact of the matter is, that's relatively subtle, which if you recall 10 episodes ago was the plan. Subtlety, simplicity and beauty. But uh, having a silver outline here doesn't quite go with that. However, creating a sunburnt uh, effect, uh, a sunburst made using fire, uh, the Shuzukiban technique, is something I want to do. I've got to sort out my backplate. I've got to uh, fill a few gaps with dust and glue just around the edges in a few places. And uh, yeah, then we can finagle things. And that's uh, where we've got our issue. Using super glue, the, the fill becomes a very dark line. I'm gonna save all of this dust and mix it with white glue and have something that looks uh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Yes, this is a new Crimson Guitars product, uh, Spectrum Naked Kits. I can't find my blue spreader, so. I don't want to ruin this with glue, actually. Palette drive. Using white glue and dust gets something a closer color to the dust uh, than you would achieve using super glue and dust. And uh, what you want is a, it's a paste. It's a almost, almost dry custom wood filler, essentially. I've got a block of titanium somewhere, probably at the home workshop, that I can't machine for love nor money. But uh, I'm thinking that that would actually make a really cool glue spreading uh, thing but that's the texture you're after. Should we found a cake making channel next, people? I can't deal with any more cake in my system. You're probably right. Now it's very warm in here. This is curing almost immediately. Uh, there may be a little bit of shrinkage, but also I'm gonna be uh, I'm going to be sanding it back a little bit. I do actually have enough. Look at that. Oh no. And just spooge it in. Scrape away as much excess as you can so you've got less sanding to do. So all about reducing work later. You'll notice the tool wall is not done. We are at Glastonbury Festival uh, for, for a week, pretty much, yeah, for the whole festival. We're in the Greenfield site building. The public are going to come. I am genuinely losing my words because I'm so excited about next week. I'm at Glastonbury Festival with Sean and with Tom Webster, with some workbenches, and we are going to be helping members of the public build a guitar on site. If you are there, give us a shout. It's going to be absolutely incredible. 
I still can't find my tools because uh, preparing for the show and finishing this build has taken <sighs> precedence over that. Now I've got an 8mm hole in the back <laughs> and uh, with a centre point bit I am not going to drill all the way through. I am going to very gently, in reverse, get rid of any excess glue in the bottom and just mark the centre of that hole and then go through with a 1mm bit and go from that side with the centre point. Otherwise I'll be ripping through and creating nasty nastiness. And I'm using my finger here so that I can just feel as the center point is uh, doing its thing. Dodgy. I know. Nice. I don't actually need to uh, drill through with a uh, one mil bit. It's doing the job for me. Okay, so I'm putting a set of Clusons on here because, hey, that's uh, what's required. 8.9 basically. So yeah, I'm going to drill it out at 8.5 and that should be good. Again, with the drill in reverse. So I'm taking a half millimetre, put it in the hole. and you drill it out in reverse. Of course, I could actually use a reamer, but uh, that involves marking it on the side of the reamer and just double checking, etc., etc. And uh, it's also a little bit squeaky and a little bit less impressive looking on camera, so. Drill in reverse, it's a good trick. Oh, I love scrapers. <laughs> I am, of course, bereft. Oh, pencils, where art thou? Did you hear the emotion in my voice there? Chisel. So many tools that you can use. I love it.
I do need to draw out what I'm doing for this back plate. And that actually works, so we don't have to make too many changes. Fine, the angle needs to be exactly 45 degrees, and the distance from that side to that side needs to be the same as that closest point there, so that it just all looks and matches up. We'll get there. So if I made this transparent, then that would look weird at being 45 degrees. So actually, let us do it this way. And there we are. I'm really enjoying the fact that I've got wood here that is soft enough that I can just score down with a chisel, with a, with a scalpel blade or a knife and meet that cut with a chisel and, and, and you're done. There's no need for routers. Not in this case. So, yeah, come on. And I'm going to be burning it all anyway, so. Ooh, alrighty. Uh, okay, <laughs> that genuinely uh, surprised me. At this point, I must confess that uh, this shielding thing that I thwacked out of copper the other day, uh, it, it's just not good enough. It is. Not ideal. Uh, the person who won this guitar, they can have this if they want it. I'll drop them a message. Uh, but I'm just going to use shielding paint. And I am now of the opinion that the back plate actually needs to be this. Oh, this is fun, it's so beautiful.
somehow feel like this is cheating a little bit, but so essentially that's allowed me to cut right down to the level that I need to be at without being dodgy with a chisel and a scalpel blade. I am still going to lose that corner, but we're going to be rounding things over and making that nice. But for now, for now it's nice and sharp. And uh, yeah, this is all about that uh, sweet cut to cut action. And I'm going to do the rest of this off camera because, uh, well, because this could get a mite boring. It's also the end of the day. Sanding to do, finishing this. Uh, We're gonna, in the morning, cut out the back plate. Here's a solution. Chunk of wood bridging there and there. Yeah. And set the marking gauge that's in there. And essentially, that gives me my height. I knew there was a way to do this. All is not lost, people. All is not lost. Although I am tired. I feel you deserve to know why I'm being quite so obtuse with this build. I am at Glastonbury at the moment in Greenfields, or about to be, this, this coming week, uh, Glastonbury Festival, and we are building a guitar in the field. And by we, I mean members of the public. I'm not doing much except facilitating this, but we're doing it with hand tools only. Now, we're not able to film the process. We are probably going to be able to have a bunch of photos and things, but check out our social media. This is going to be a crowd-built instrument with hand tools. I've been obsessing about this for a while, wondering how we would do it. And these are processes that uh, we're going to have to do in a field with people who don't know what they're doing. It's going to be interesting. If you're at the festival, come check us out. Uh, join in, please. It's going to be cool. You didn't need to see the sanding, but uh, a lot of that has happened, and uh, yeah, the instrument is starting to look incredible. We're nearly there. I wanted to burn this. I wanted to create a sunburst kind of a fed using flame, but I'm, I'm worried about the, the glue line at the edge. I am worried about uh, delaminating and creating gaps and things, and I'm worried about just messing this up. When I originally started this build, I wanted to create a simple, elegant, beautiful guitar. And I think that going back to my old ways of overdoing things, it's just not a good idea. I don't think I'm even gonna stain it. Oof, I don't know. Finishing, however, is next week. We still need to uh, point out a few things and do a little bit of finessing, so yeah. Now, before I get on to other matters, this happened. And uh, that is gonna need a repair. So the, the clamping, I used this, sorry if that's uh, giving people motion sickness, I used this to clamp it down and it just wasn't strong enough. I only clamped in two places, it didn't push down in the corners. It was a rushed thing at the end of a night, I seem to recall. The beautiful thing is I do have a lot more of, of the wood. And uh, the repair is gonna involve actually cutting along one of the grain lines, removing that material, not in a straight line, along the grain line, and then finding the same grain pattern in here. This is where we got that uh, headstock veneer from on the other side and uh, inlaying that in. That, however, is going to be something that I'm going to do as an interstitial one-off tutorial style video because it's a, it's a useful process and that will come uh, 
in the not too distant future. Remember, I am actually away for a, just over a week doing a Grasnabry Festival and, and all that. So uh, uh, for now, I need to get this body and this neck together. The problem with working in softwoods like this is that it's almost impossible to sand it without going in. You've got soft grain and hard grain, soft, hard, soft, hard. And uh, you create dips in the soft grain unless you're using a particularly good sanding block or in this case, sanding stick, crimson guitars, of course. But you will never get perfection. You look at those old, uh, those old straps made in the softwood, you'll see, you'll see dents left, right and centre. And because of this, you don't tend to design guitars with wood this soft, intending them to remain pristine. And uh, with that in mind, I am going to be finishing this guitar in a cracking nitrocellulose lacquer. And uh, we're going to force check it a little bit, put it through a freezer and see what happens. I think it's going to look gorgeous. And uh, after a year or two of playing, uh, hell, well, it depends on who won the instrument and uh, what they do to it, but uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I believe you. So that's all of the initial sanding done. Once it's been clamped in and we have uh, put a few dents in, we then uh, clear up the excess glue and re-sand prior to finishing. This is a few, few things that need to be slightly adjusted. So I'm using the pressure marks from where the neck is touching to just remove uh, and, and get the fit right, hopefully. Damn, that's soft wood. How the hell did that happen? Hmm, okay. Um, in cases like this, if you're not in a major rush, grab some, su uh, not super glue, some white glue and, uh, and repair it properly. Uh, super glue sometimes doesn't like curing on spot repairs like this. And wood glue is designed for the job. A lot of guitar building is about fixing the, the, the stuff that happens along the way. Um, yeah, just is what it is. Leveling beam, perfectly flat. Come on, baby. This time. Is that? Oh, it is. It was that time. Alrighty, this is. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, sorry. Uh, exciting times. Exciting times. This is the first time that I've done this particular type of joint by hand, and uh, we're good. We can glue it up. 
almost. I've got to remove a little bit of uh, uh, waste from in here. I need to cut this bit of tongue out and I'm actually going to inlay it on the top there once we're done. But uh, that clamp and, uh, and we're done for the day. Come on then, let's get this thing glued in. The beauty of this joint is that it's not just the, the hole, essentially. It is also the top. And we've got and we've got end grain and uh, all of these things combined make for a very nice very resonant uh, neck joint I, I genuinely believe that uh, and my mind has changed on this front a lot over the years but I genuinely believe that an, a, a set neck done in this manner oh, I'm sticky now promotes a good sound guitar. We are golden. This has been a genuinely, hi, there you are, a genuinely fun process. Uh, I'm doing things that uh, I've been avoiding for years and, uh, oh, and enjoying it. So uh, get yourself out of your comfort zone. That is the uh, that is a trick. This is the point where I ask you to subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and haven't yet subscribed. Share this thing with your friends and all that jazz. Uh, it genuinely does help and make a difference to the algorithms, etc. Uh, let me know in the comments what type of videos you want, what sort of things you want to want to see us do, us make um, repairs, restorations, tear downs, full builds, etc. Um, tutorials something I've not thought of uh, I'd, I'd, I'd need your feedback and I appreciate it I'm gonna take a, a week off go and uh, build guitars in a field at uh, Glastonbury festival so if you're there uh, come and check us out we're in green fields and it's gonna be I think it's gonna be awesome I'll let you know next week uh, while I am doing that nothing's gonna be happening on this guitar at all actually uh, we'll declamp it, fine sand it, and then when I get back, I will stain it, and we will hit it with some nitro and do that process. Thanks for watching. Catch you uh, in a few weeks. Have fun. Goodbye.